Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Fortnite is arguably the most successful game of the past six years. More than $10 billion of revenue, 150 million plus players worldwide. This thing is a beast. You are watching this being played on an i5-6500 with a 2021 graphics card upgrade. This is a $230, at least as of the moment, RX 6600 playing at 1080p epic detail. I will show you low detail in just a minute to show you some performance differences. What a journey it has been for Tim Sweeney from 1991 when he launched Potomac Computer Systems in his parents' house in, naturally, Potomac, Maryland, to the launch of games like Jazz Jackrabbit, ZZT, and, of course, Epic Pinball, all the way to Unreal, Unreal Tournament, the Unreal Engine, and then finally, Fortnite. But Fortnite really has eclipsed them all. Unreal was epic in its day, no pun intended, and it sure still has its fans today. But its success is puny compared to the success of Fortnite. It is difficult to understate the insanity of the Fortnite empire and how big it truly has become. In some regards, it's a shame because it has taken away from basically everything else Epic could possibly do because it is such a juggernaut. This video, however, is not about Fortnite's success or the business model or anything else. Instead, it's about the performance of this game. Being a live service game, a lot has changed over the years. This game ran just fine on this computer when it was first launched, but as a live service game, it has been dramatically updated over the years with new textures, new graphics, details, features, abilities, and just basically overall effects. Heck, this game has ray tracing in it now, which of course we're not using at the moment. Epic detail or not, an RX 6600 is not suited for ray tracing. But we are playing at 1080p epic detail and you can see the problem we're facing. We're running at 30 frames per second. That's dreadful. It runs, it's playable, it functions, but it's not a great overall experience. Turning the detail down would definitely help. But there's a limit to what that's going to do for you considering we're on a four core, four thread CPU. The i5-6500 came out in 2015. It has a good clock speed at 3.3 gigahertz. The i5-6400 runs at 2.7 gigahertz, so it's a very nice clock speed bump, but it is a far cry from the four gigahertz of the 6700K, much less the lack of hyperthreading, which would definitely help here since we are CPU bound in at least part of this game. One of the most interesting numbers on the screen, in my opinion, is the VRAM usage and the main system RAM usage. This game did not use that much when it launched. 13 gigs of main system RAM and 7 gigabytes of VRAM. Again, 1080p. Yes, it's epic detail, but still 1080p. However, this is a clean test bench. So keep in mind that on a clean test bench, we don't have anything in the background running. Windows updates aren't running. Antivirus is turned off. System updates are turned off. There's no other launchers running. We have a clean install of Windows. All we have are the Epic Game Store and MSI Afterburner running. This video capture is being done on a secondary PC using a hardware capture card. The HDMI out cable from the video card from the RX 6600 is going straight to the second computer. So this machine doesn't even know it's being recorded. In fairness to Fortnite, this was playable. It was controllable. It's not super smooth. It's not super great. You wouldn't want to be a competitive player doing this, but it was controllable. It was playable, even if it wasn't great. It's just a compromised experience on an older machine. But if it's all you've got and you want to play the game, don't play it epic detail. Well, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Before I show you the actual game footage, I want to show you the settings used for the low detail run so you can see exactly how it was configured. 3D render resolution was set to 100%, and that's an important point because by default, when you set everything to low, a lot of times 3D render resolution will be set to a percentage of the monitor's resolution, and if you're running at 50% render resolution, you have a muddied, ugly mess. Now, to be fair, this is a different map and a different game mode to the epic run that you saw before. Yes, they should be the same. What can I say? So the results are not directly comparable. It really should have been a Team Rumble. It's not, so it is what it is. But those of you who play Fortnite regularly, you should be able to look at this and get a rough idea of what to expect. 
the frame rate is through the roof. We're at 142 frames per second. The 1% low isn't too bad either. At 62 frames per second, it's certainly perfectly functional. And what do you expect on an eight year old computer? The RX 6600 is definitely helping here. While we are CPU bound, you can see the CPU is at 100%, the graphics card is not, and the graphics card is throttling, the graphics card does help in the surge moments where there's a lot of stuff going on. You'll notice the clock speed of the graphics card is all over the place. That is because it ramps up as the demand increases and it ramps down as the demand decreases. And of course the usage will change a little bit as well. But what you're seeing here is really the maximum frame rate this CPU can possibly generate, which is why it's pegged out to the max. Some detail setting between low and epic will get this done. Maybe medium, maybe high, maybe a mixture of medium and high is probably the sweet spot. Despite benchmarks being run at presets or max detail or minimum detail, the truth is usually somewhere in the middle with a mixture of settings is going to get you the best overall experience and fully utilize your CPU and GPU. One video idea that I've had for a while is to show several examples of CPU and GPU usage at different details and talking about how to use MSI Afterburner to adjust your graphics detail settings in order to fully utilize whatever hardware you have. If your graphics card's a bit more powerful, you can crank everything up. If your graphics card is weaker, but your CPU is great, then you can crank it down. Of course, if your CPU is super weak, there's nothing you can do about it. Play this on a Core 2 Duo and it'll be awful. But regardless, it is certainly functional. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you still play with a machine this old? Do you play Fortnite with an older machine? Do you play it with a weaker graphics card but a newer CPU? I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Let me know what game and or hardware you'd like to see tested next. Thanks so much for watching. Do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I will see all of you in the next video.